And thank you for joining us tonight. We have a very interesting guest with us this evening. Our guest is Vicki May. Vicki is a registered psychiatric nurse. She's a psychic medium and paranormal investigator with over 20 years experience, a, an author, and uh, a uh, noted authority on, uh, among other things, the Exorcist case and locations in St. Louis. That's the basis for the movie The Exorcist. How are you doing, Vicki? I'm doing fine, thank you. How are you? Oh, pretty well, pretty well. Uh, we're, it's one of those days that uh, the studio is odd. Why are you looking at me when you say odd? Maybe that's just reflex, John. No, it's no me. <laughs> Can we say that? Can we just say weed? <laughs> I said I was doing weed. I said I can smell weed. It's the white sage that I purchased out of California. Okay, it didn't sound a whole lot better. But it's well, it's, well, it smells nice. It's got a nice aroma. It, it, it does. Just open that door. I did. Yes, you did. If it was legal, I wouldn't. That's wrong. Wrong, children. We are we are talking about sage. Yes. Anyway, <laughs> we digress, John. <laughs> I didn't do anything. You started. If I heard him, there will be silence on the line. Uh, Vicky, uh, getting back to a little more serious topic. Uh, you have a lot of experience. You're from the St. Louis area, and you've done a lot of work uh, around the uh, the exorcist case. Is that correct? That is correct. Yes. Uh huh. And uh, in particular, you you uh, are uh, an authority on a lot of the little known facts, things that people aren't really aware of. And I think that's something that's really fascinating uh, to people. Okay, let's let's talk about that a little bit. Tell us uh, some of the things that we don't really know. Um, the Exorcist House um, is actually built on a uh, vortex, um, very one of the strongest vortex I've ever felt in my in my life. Um, and yeah, people aren't going to know that. Um, and 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 having been there uh, twice in in the Exorcist House, uh, doing a, a investigation with a local radio show here in St. Louis and then returning and uh, doing a documentary on The Exorcist and the, the story itself called The Haunted Boy. It, um, I discovered that this vortex is, it, it, and, and as far as I'm concerned and, and with you know, my, what I know, is the reason that the boy uh, was drawn to go to St. Louis, why the demon wanted him to come to St. Louis. Um, if you recall, at one point, this, this started out in Maryland, close to Washington, D.C., and up at, they, they weren't able to do anything up there to help the boy, and then the letters L-O-U-I-S became raised from the inside out on his chest. Now, both the boy's mom and father had family here in St. Louis. And the first, they came to St. Louis thinking that's what they should do. They went to the mother's sister's home, and there was so much disturbance the first night that the sister said, you cannot stay here. The brother, the husband's brother, just happened to live in a neighboring community called Belnor here in St. Louis County. That's where they went, and that's where the exorcis exorcism was actually started, was in this home in Belnor, Missouri, a St. Louis suburb. With that vortex being as strong as it was, and, and as we all, well, people, some people know, but vortexes, you know, are just, like tornadoes of energy. They can be used for good, they can be used for evil. This is why 
the demon, I believe, wanted the boy there because the home was built on this powerful vortex for the energy. The, the energy, when I, the first time we went, and the first time I went to the boys' room, which is upstairs in the second floor, the energy was so strong, it took me three times just to be able to set foot in the room. It was pushing me back, being that strong. And I'm very used to energies. And in the, in this, of course, this is years and years after the exorcism and everyone connected to it had left. Right, 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 yes. Uh, well, vortex is the end of it. They're not going to go anywhere. They're, that's part of nature. So that the vortex is still in the home. It's it's never it's never going to go. Even when the home's gone, the vortex is still going to be there. And, and uh, for people who aren't real familiar with the concept, how how would someone recognize that a vortex is present? Some people would not recognize it, uh, not be able to really tell that energy, or they might, some people might think it's like, you know, this room just feels kind of strange, kind of a pressure maybe. You know, um, I, I just happen to be very, very sensitive to energies like that. And so some some people may, you know, may, the, other, the other people that were with me, most of them could not sense that, that energy. But I, you know, I could, it, and, it, and it was so powerful at one point when I did get into the room, I was dowsing and I was walking the perimeter of the room. That's all I could do is go around the perimeter of the walls. And when I got to the other side of the room away from the door, there was a window and I just got past that window and the energy literally pinned me there. I couldn't move. It was that strong. And they, we have, we, there are pictures. We have pictures of this. And I just, I had to just literally, once I figured, and actually it was a photographer that was with our group, and he, he's the one that said, it's got you pinned. And he was watching me and photographing. And I, I just, once I realized that, then I just had to literally fight my way through all the way to the, back out to the door again. And it, it is so powerful also, the trees on the back of the, the backyard, the neighbor's trees, the house, trees that are in front and the, on either side of the house, the trees are all growing towards the house. I'm not sure that I've ever seen that anywhere before. Do we have any idea what kind of energy that, that it is, whether it's magnetic or electrical or something different? No, it, it, it wasn't It wasn't electrical. You know, when we do investigations, you know, that's some of the things that we look for, you know, that's something else that could be causing the energy. Um, transformer, uh, running water someplace, um, nothing, nothing like that in the area. This was just, it's a natural vortex. Just a, it's Mother Nature. Right, and, and would you say, some people would say this is a, a place where the veil is thin, basically. You know, another way of sometimes people express places like this. So, yeah, some people do, some people do say that. Um, I, you know, myself, I, I don't, I don't look at it that way, but, you know, that's okay. Um, right. I, I, you know, I, I could see where people, you know, could perceive it as being the veil being very thin. And again, it's, it's just pure energy. Pure energy, natural energy. And it can Does be any, used... I'm sorry, go ahead. I was just, just saying that it, it can be used for good or for evil. And there is why they had so much trouble uh, re removing that they couldn't remove the demon at that place because it was feeding on that energy, keeping itself strong. 
Did you have any devices that picked up on that on that energy? Of the demon? No, not no, not the demon. That the de that demon's gone. Um, what what we did find there um, was a an entity that again used this energy. But this was uh, it was it was a man, and he had been a, a, a bad man in in life, and uh, was a child molester, and he had. Uh, several children that, you know, entities that he was holding captive using this energy that I had to clear out from the home. So did, did I... Uh-huh. Did any of your electronic devices pick up on the energy itself? Any K2 activity or anything like that? The, um, uh, Michael... Michael Lynch, um, you know, he picked up on more of that. Now, when we did the uh, when we did the movie, the documentary, the uh, Haunted Boy, they used uh, several other pieces of, of equipment for the, for the movie, and they it did pick up quite a few things. Um, we we got the Dave Glover show got an EVP. They uh, for the movie they got. Uh, picked up a growling coming from the room. So it was picked up um, on a, on electrical equipment, yes. But uh, uh, would this be, you know, is the house on, say, a ley line or anything like that? Uh, not that we know of. Okay. Not, not that we know of. There's, you know, we pretty much have ruled out anything that we could think of that could cause something something that strong something like that is there, any, it, oh, is there anything unusual in the geography or or a large body of water nearby anything like that no 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 this this is in a st louis suburb and it's in a community that's a little subdivision of homes. There's nothing but homes everywhere. There's there's no lakes. There's no running water anywhere. It, it it's a it's a neighborhood. It's, a, it's your regular every day. You would drive down the street, and if you didn't know what house it was, you would you would never know. Okay. Yeah. Now, mm -hmm. I understood. Did you say that? Um, that uh, there's there's an entity there now that, that's this uh, this human spirit that was a child molester. Right, but I, I I removed I removed him and the children. I I called for Saint Michael to come and Saint Michael and his forces to come and take them and which which he did. Um, the, the energy from that was, St. Michael coming was so strong, it, it literally knocked me back. If I had not been close to a wall where I could put my hand up, I would have fallen, fallen down. But when, um, oh, what was it, Ghost Adventures went there? I don't know if any of you saw that particular program. But when they were there, one of the neighbors came up and was talking to them. And he stated that Michael, St. Michael, has been seen in the room in the house. And he, this was, what, just a couple of years ago when, when, they, when they went and did their investigation at the house. And, and just, just asking, how, how, how were, was everyone seen when they said they saw St. Michael? Um, how how were you, how were they really sure that's who that's who was there? Well, I, since I wasn't there, I can't really answer that. I would I would think that they would have to know who Saint Michael was to be able to say that Saint Michael has been seen there. Okay. Uh, so, but you know, if I if I had. If I had been there, I would have loved to ask him that. 
how they knew it was St. Michael. Um, but St. Michael did promise me that he would stay and watch over the house. So it just kind of validated what what I had said. And I, I can't remember now if it's in the documentary that I said that or, or not. But, but it, it shows me calling St. Michael and his forces coming to clear the house and to help the children. Excuse me, based on your experiences there and, and, and what, what, what's been going on in recent years in the house, uh, what are your thoughts on the, the nature of the events of the original exorcist case in the house? On the, the original, the original yeah, case? The Estrus case itself, based on what you've seen in the house and, and what, what it can do, what are your thoughts on how um, that case and the exorcism has been portrayed um, and uh, set out in, you know, by the church and others? Well, the... the the, the church, the priest uh, that were there, that were present, uh, that did the exorcism, I don't think, I really don't think they could sense the energy from from that that place, the, the grounds itself, because it comes up from, from the earth. I don't think they could have. If they could have, they would not have stayed as long as they did trying to complete the exorcism there. So because as, as we know, the the exorcism was finally completed at a local hospital in the city of St. Louis uh, called at the time Election Brothers Hospital. And that is where the exorcism was actually completed. And the boy was... Mm -hmm. I was going to say the boy was removed from the home a couple times. Uh, the first time he was taken to a local hospital, this is a very no, little known fact, to a local hospital called St. Vincent's, simply because of his physical deterioration. And St. Vincent's, as ever since he has been there, it's, it, it has had hauntings there also. This is a, and this is shown in the documentary also. And they took the boy back to the home and you know, continued with the exorcism. And uh, they finally took him to the uh, rectory at St. Louis University. And they could not complete it there either. And then took him eventually then to the uh, San, to, uh, Election Brothers Hospital to complete where the exorcism was actually completed just just before Easter, I believe it was, day or two before Easter. And, and for people, I, I, I think sometimes it, it's, it, it kind of loses track in telling the story, but this was over quite an extended period of time, too. It, it, yes, it was. Yes, it was. Um, it, it was completed in um, April very end of April. I want to say the 29th of, I'm, I'm not going to say that's for positive, the date. Mm -hmm. um, I believe it started in, I think it started in like February up in Maryland. January or February of 1949 in Maryland. And, and so um, just sort of, this is a little, uh, we'll get back to, to the case itself in a minute, but there, there seems to be sort of a uh, Liberation of, uh, of so-called exorcisms and even people trying to do exorcisms themselves recently in the last few years, um, and over a, you know, a few hours or whatever, uh, would you say that this is a good illustration of why those kind of uh, rituals don't work very often? Um. I mean, when, when ghost hunters attempt to do an exorcism? Well, no, I mean, there, there's been quite a number of uh, uh, cases in the news of, of lay people doing exorcisms, etc. I think pe I think people have got an idea it's something that can be done easily and quickly. 
Yeah, and that's, and, and that's, that's their mistake. Right. That, that is their mistake. Uh, you you must be you must be trained. You must have a uh, a good understanding of what you're dealing with, all facets of what you're dealing with, such as the exorcist house. Uh, they didn't know that again that there was this vortex of energy that this demon could draw upon to keep himself strong. You, you must know your your area. You must know what you're dealing with. You must know how to be able to deal with it, and you must know how to protect yourself. And, and I, I'm I, I'm far from claiming to be an expert in the area, but I'm I'm, I'm not sure whether even church exorcists exorcists are, are trained in in those aspects, looking at different energies, etc., okay. as, as a source of part of the issue. Is that accurate? Um, I would say yes, that, that's pretty accurate. Uh, back, back in 1949, you know, I, I'm, I'm sure they were not enlightened as far as energy and how energy can affect and be used. Now, some priests today, I don't know, maybe they are a little bit more, a little bit more schooled in that. It, it's it, because it is becoming more more common knowledge. Uh, I you know I, I can't really answer that. I I would certainly hope that they would obtain that kind of knowledge for themselves and for protection if they're going to go in and do an, do an exorcism. I, I agree with you there. Let, mm -hmm. let, let's let's step back a minute. You mentioned Saint Vincent's and they, that haunting uh, or paranormal activity there since the boy was there. Does it seem to be connected with that particular case, or just that you know, often hospitals are fairly haunted anyway? Now, St. Vincent's has uh, been around for many, many, many years, but uh, from uh, apparently since the boy was there, it, it escalated. There's it, it high, I guess a, a, a lot of the paranormal activity goes on there, especially where the boy was. See, that's, that's the thing, you know, a lot of it where the boy was, and in the Election Brothers Hospital, uh, they had the same thing. They had to literally shut that room down. They could not use it anymore, and they would still hear screams and noises coming from that room, even though it was shut down. And I, it, eventually, I, I believe, they just they wound up having to shut that whole wing down. But eventually, that hospital was was raised and a new hospital was built there. Not in the same place, actually, the parking lot of the hospital is where the old hospital was, where the exorcism actually took place. Uh, now, one little known fact about the case is that uh, and I've heard this from other authorities, is that one of the priests involved ended up being um, a resident of one of the church hospitals in St. Louis for the rest of his life afterwards. Is that correct? I'm, as far as, I have not heard that. I have not heard that. Okay. And I, I don't, I don't think that is true. Uh, I, I, like I said, I, I have not heard that. And the other, the other part of that is, um, I personally know a gentleman who was a student at St. Louis University High School who had father as a instructor okay. and relayed the story to his class. And as far as I know, that was not part of the story. Okay. Uh is any does, are any of the any of the people that were involved in the case did they have uh, paranormal uh, episodes later that you're aware of? 
I, I don't, I haven't heard of any anything like that. I know, I have never heard any any stories to that effect. That's that. I, I just have to put it that way. I can't say yes and I can't say no. I, I don't have any knowledge. Do you, uh, do you know if the original house is still open for investigation or is someone living there? The home, um, it's very interesting about the home because over the years, since that time, many families have bought that house, moved in. Some families have said that they left because of paranormal activity, and other families have said they didn't notice anything. And I, I can say that fairly certain because of speaking to the owner of the home when we were there both times. And this is what the owner of the home had, the realtor had told him. And he, he did not seem to be affected by anything in the home, but he was um, more into goth. His, his bedroom was decorated in skull and crossbones. Okay. He had uh, Hellboy pictures for his art hanging in his living room. And Hellboy pictures? Hellboy. Like, and he, um, he had, he liked Elvis and he had Elvis magnets on the refrigerator, you know, pictures of Elvis. And there was one in particular where he had taken a red pen and colored red the whites of the picture of Alvis, his eyes. That's a little creepy. <laughs> uh-huh. It, 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 yes, it was. Uh, you know, and the first night we were there, there was another phenomenon that, um, as, as we were there, because the first time we were there, it was with a radio show. There were contestants there, and, you know, so other things were going on. No, I take that back. This was when we filmed it. This was the second time we filmed it. We were there till like four o'clock in the morning. And so, you know, we we just kind of had to sit around when it wasn't our turn to be doing something on camera. And he had, just like all the rest of us, you know, a, uh, a DVD, DVR, you know, a big component under the TV. And actually, you know, they had the extra, he had the extras going and movies like that going. And... So it was an electronic, right? Plugged in, electrical. And I kept looking at it through the evening. And I kept thinking, God, this time is going by slow. It like stopped running at like 730. Uh. And it was plugged in. And it had been running earlier. And, you know, we'd been there since uh, I think we got there like at three or four in the afternoon. And all of a sudden that evening, it was, it, it just kind of like stopped and it was a digital. It just kind of stopped. And we, we just lost total track of time, total track of time in the home. And the home, another interesting thing too, the home was built in 19, early 1940s, I don't know, 42, 43, something like that. And at the time, so at the time it was a fairly new home. The home itself had not really been remodeled since that time. It was, it was not, everything was pretty much the same as it was. Nobody had really updated and remodeled it. I thought that was very interesting considering, you know, we're talking, you know, what, 2006 or seven or eight or something like that when I was there. So did, did everyone seem to have the same uh, experience with time being affected? I'm sorry, I didn't. Uh, did everyone seem to have the same kind of experience with time slowing down? Yeah, we all did. Yes, we yeah. did. We, we, we did have that, uh, everybody. Um, like I said, we were, you know, we, when we weren't really doing anything for the film, we were all gathered in the, the living room area and talking and, you know, and eventually we all kind of like 
you know, figured that out. And we're like, oh, my gosh, you know. <laughs> just kind of like a time warp went on in there. Very, very strange home. Very strange perhaps, home. Perhaps the vortex has more to do with time and space than, than uh, a energy wave. I'm sorry. I said, so perhaps the vortex works more on time and space than uh, energy in the sense of, you know, what we traditionally think of, like man magnetism or something. And then, and that's you know that's entirely you know possible. Um, it, it did not happen the first time I was there, that we were in the home, um, but it happened the second time. And so you know. Uh, another phenomenon that happened the first time we were there with, with the radio show and the contestants, we had, what they had to do was stay in the boys' room for like 15 minutes in the house, totally alone with the door shut to the room. Now, one contestant would not, would not do anything, you know, after she first got there. She just couldn't do it. The two that did stay there in the room... Both of them said they thought someone was in the home because they had a, um, they just had a candle, a little table in the room, and they had a little camera going with a microphone in the room to make sure the contestants did stay in the room. And we, the light was on in, in the hall outside the room. And they both said they thought somebody was in there because they could see, look like somebody walking. You know, the light underneath the door being broken, like somebody was walking in front of the door. And no one, we were all outside. Everybody was accounted for. We were outside the home in the backyard. And at one point, we heard this boom. I mean, this huge boom. It sounded like a cannon went off. Coming from inside the home. But we were apparently the only ones that heard it because no neighbors came out to see what was going on, what happened, what the noise was. Nobody. But it was, and, it, and this is on tape. That boom is on tape. Huh. Yeah. It's like a sonic boom or something. Yeah, and, and, and yeah. for those of that are familiar, there was a loud boom when the demon actually finally left the boy's body. There was a loud boom heard at that point also. Is, is, the boy, is that room used now? The boy's room in the home? Yeah, is someone staying yeah. there? Well, yeah. I, I have to assume so. The, um, uh, when, when, when Ghost Adventures went there, they were in the bedroom and there was, it looked like a, you know, a, a, a normal bedroom, you know, had the bed and the pictures and the wall and dresser, and, you know, it looked like a a normal bedroom. So, I, I would have to assume yes. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Any, yeah. any, any other uh, sort of little-known facts that, that people might be surprised about the case? Um, I don't, I think it's really, uh, you know, pretty much um, all the, the little extra things that are not, you know, that people would not ordinarily know or, or you know, be privy to. The only other thing um, that is, is interesting is we have a museum in St. Louis called City Museum, and it, it, it's a very interesting museum. It's not like ordinary. It's an interactive type museum, and it's geared for adults and kids, and, and it's very interactive. The cross from the old Election Brothers Hospital is hanging in City Museum. They have that cross. That was used in the exorcism? No, the cross that was on the hospital, oh, on top okay. of the hospital, the building. Yeah, uh -huh. they have they have that cross from the hospital itself hanging in the museum. So that's uh but I, I had not heard any anything about problems going on at City Museum paranormal wise, so well, that's good. they're just hanging there if people would like to see it. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, let's let's shift gears just a little bit. Another part of, of, of what what you do with the paranormal world is you you're a psychic medium. Yes. Uh huh. And um, now, do you do you use your gift for an investigation or working with individuals? I, I use it. I use it for both. Um, I do. I do readings for people. I do. Um, if, if somebody would, you know, want to try and contact a loved one on the other side, I, I will do that. And in investigating, it's. I. I kind of don't understand how why all investigating teams don't have a psychic because the psychic. That's a medium is the one that can tell them who is actually in the home, why they're in the home, why they aren't leaving, you know, get the story behind what what's truly going on. It, you know, it's one thing to go in with your equipment, you get orbs and EVP, so yes, it's haunted, you know, here it is, but you need to do something with that information. These Those entities... They don't belong here. They need to move on to the other side to do what they're supposed to be doing, especially if they're creating, you know, problems, you know, being evil or, or hurting people. Then they need to be dealt with, and they need to they need to move on. And so that's that's my my job when we do investigating is find out who's there, why they're there, uh, what can we do to help them. And to to get them to move move on, and that's what I do. I, I also do, use my dowsing rods. Mainly do my dowsing rods with um, to establish the uh, the strength of the energy. The, the stronger the energy is, the further apart my rods will swing. Now, at the entrance to the boys' room, they were pointing straight backwards. Wow. And that's that's powerful. They were straight backwards, and again, I, we have I have a we have pictures of that. And so, um, so I use that in in doing. You know, I it's, I feel like that's what I should be doing to help these entities that you know are here, trapped here for for whatever reason that they are here. You know, such as the children that were trapped by that the child molester. Right. You know, um, help them. Do you find do you find that there there are entities that are here by choice though that are, are it's not a matter that they're trapped or they just don't know to go right. on but they choose to be here? If they get this, yes, we have there's all there's always entities that choosing to be here for various reasons. Um they some some of the common ones they don't even know they're dead. That's common. They, you know, they had a sudden death, and they don't know that they're dead. They are attached to something, um, a person, a property, a home, a piece of furniture. They're just attached to it, and so they go with it. That's Some people say, you know, they, they bought this antique piece of furniture someplace, and all of a sudden all this stuff started happening in their home. Whoever had owned that piece was so attached to it for whatever reason. Um, we had those that were just, they're vengeful. They were mean and nasty, and so they're staying mean and nasty, and being mean and nasty uh, entities here on Earth, that's the type that people get hurt um, by those type of entities. And they're just, um, they're just mean and, and evil people. They were in life, and they are in death, or they're... They're mad and trying to avenge somebody for its living for what that person might have done to them in life. Oh well, yeah, I agree. I, I agree, and I, th I think I, I think that spirit does retain a lot of personality on on the other side. Uh, I know we've encountered uh, spirits that often seem to be uh, here willingly, almost watching over. Uh, Say family members, etc. Not so much as attached, but almost in a guardian, uh, angel type role. Do you find that as well? Oh, absolutely. 
Absolutely. The, the, the difference with, with them is they have, they have moved on. They went to the other side, but they have chosen to come back and just to watch over someone. As opposed to, I'm sorry. Or, or to give guidance in some way. Right, right. Yeah, some people are guides, and the people that have come to, you know, watch over, uh, generally, they went to the other side, they did what they were supposed to, and this is what they're choosing to do. They're not staying here purposely to do that. That's, I think that's the difference. They're not purposely staying here. They have gone on. Right. Mm -hmm. right. I was actually sleeping, but you woke me up. Thanks a lot. Oh, I'm sorry. Hey, hey to disturb you. I think, <laughs> okay. if, I think if you were to read John, it would be pretty blank right now. <laughs> if you were to read me, I'm always blank. Not, not so, not so. What, what, what do you do to, to uh, help them move on? Um, there's several different uh, methods that I use to help people move on. I will, um, if, if they're if they're willing, I can just I will talk to them and tell them that they just need to go on and have them look for the light and to send them on. If they don't want to go on, if I can't do it that way, then I will call for someone from the light that loves them to come and get them. And generally, that one will work. But, you know, a loving, and I have had some say that they see Jesus come for them. And some, it's the, you know, mother, you know, relative, or, you know, and they will go on when somebody calls from them and they see someone from the light. The ones that are, you know, refusing to go or the mean and evil spirits, I, I call for St. Michael and his forces. I just call for him and he will come and he deals with them and takes them on where they need to go. That's pretty much my three three methods I use to help an entity move on to the other side. Uh, that came to me uh, as, you, as you were speaking and we're, when we talk about going to the light, uh, you know, there, there's of course the debate of, of what, what is the light and what, do, what are people or, or spirits actually seeing and, and Kind of brings up the near death experience, and mm -hmm. I, know, I know you're you're a nurse as well. Um, what are your thoughts on that debate where science says it's just a uh, chemical process in the brain going on as, as it dies? Um. Well, I, I think it's 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 scientific community thinking concrete. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, so, sci scientists have to have a reason. You know, or the, it, it's got to be black or it's got to be white. Well, there's a lot of this world that's gray. And this falls in that realm of gray. And as a nurse, I have talked to people that have had near-death experiences. And they, you know, I, I, I personally believe in, that they are near-death experiences, that you go on to the other side. But it's, it's not your time. Um, and for whatever reason, you are supposed to experience going to the other side. Some people come back from those um, and, and are psychic after they've had that experience. Maybe that's why they were supposed to. Um, but I personally have no doubt that they go to the other side and then are sent back to finish whatever it is they, they need to finish here on this, on our plane, on this physical plane. Um, and I, I just think it's a scientific community having to come up with some kind of an answer because they can't accept, you know, well, I can't touch it, I can't see it, so it doesn't exist. So kind of just, mentality. Just as the world was flat 500 years ago. Yeah, 
Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You know, sci- scientists, and you know, being in healthcare, you know, I'm more on the scientific side, you know, myself. Um, but I'm not. I'm. I'm certainly not that rigid. And you know, what 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 I can do, I I certainly know better. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I got firsthand experience, I guess. So if, I, I just think they just they have to find some kind of an answer. So. That's what they're going to throw out to the world, and and I, and I and I I feel bad because I think it's a disservice to these to the people that this happens to, because they need, you know, they've had an experience, and they that's outside of anybody else, and they have to have a way to process it, and by having, you know. Scientific community doctors saying, "Oh no, that was just a chemical reaction in your brain when you know when your heart stopped, and no, that didn't." I, I you know, I, I think that's a great disservice. You know, they need they need help in processing it and being told, "You did experience. That's okay." You know, what what can you learn from it? You know, and they need to, they need help with it. They need help to know they're okay. Well, uh, I. I, I think it's kind of like anything that someone is the first person to do something and, you know, an explorer goes to a, a new place or uh, find, finds a, you know, submarine goes to the bottom of the ocean, finds, a, you know, sees a new life, you know, new fish that's never been seen and everyone says, no, you must be mistaken because right. no one else has a reference point. Right, right, right. Yeah, and, and, and I had a patient one time, um, I was in his room, I don't remember what I was doing in his room, whatever I was doing, and we were talking, and, and the poor guy, I felt so bad for him because he he kind of very gingerly brought it up to me, you know, like, do you, you believe in that? And because he was afraid to bring it up, to talk right. to me about it until I said, oh, yeah, you know, I do believe and then he told me his experience, and I just felt so bad for, for the gentleman that he was made to feel that way for something that happened to him. Exactly. You know, it shouldn't. It, it shouldn't. They shouldn't feel that way. That they okay. were afraid to talk about it. Uh, we are. We're kind of coming to the to the end. I've got a couple of questions I do want to to ask you that I think are, are pertinent. First. Um, I'd like to ask, um, we have a question in the chat room, have you encountered non-human entities that were not demonic? Have I what? Have you encountered non-human entities uh, that were not demonic? Um, I have come across uh, extraterrestrials um, in ethereal form. Um, I have, I, I have come across evil entities that I have seen also, mm-hmm. uh, so I, I have, yes. Okay. Uh, and I, I know there's even some, you know, there's some theories that, you know, ETs may be humans from the future or something like that. Have, have you ever gotten a sense of, or, or are they really another species, or is this a function of time travel, etc.? cetera? Right. I mean, are, are, I guess, extra, yeah, extraterrestrials other species? Well, no. because there are theories, there are theories, there are theories uh, that people are putting out that what, what people are really experiencing when they have an experience of an ET may be human species from far in the future coming back in time. Um, I, 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 I do believe that's happened. Um, and I, and, and, you know, I, I've got almost 30 years as a nurse and I've worked many years in psychiatry. And I, I do believe I came across the time travel traveler um, as one of my patients one time. They, um, you know, he was medicated very heavily in the emergency department. And I just happened to be, you know, checking on him in his room when, when he woke up. And he sat up. I mean, he was calm, you know, very calm. 
and and you know just kind of waking up and I was talking to him a little bit you know how are you doing and how you feeling you know that kind of thing and I mean he he he, sat, he he looked at me he was sitting on the bed and I was standing there and he looked me square in the eye and he said what year is this and I I just I just knew you know he'd had a bad experience in the time travel which is how we wound up in our emergency department and because he was medicated you know he was very confused i i can't say in all the years i have ever had a patient wake up and ask what year it was yeah that would seem to be an odd question you think where am i maybe but <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, what day is this or, you know, something, but no, not what year. And he wasn't agitated. He wasn't confused. He was, you know, like he would be, you know, waking up and, and very calm. And what what year is this? You know, where have I landed kind of thing, you know? That's what, right. so, yeah, I absolutely, absolutely, yes. I, I do believe that people have come back from in the future. Uh, sort of a, a related topic that I think is... Uh, you can address very uh, very well being a psychiatric nurse as well as a psychic medium. Um, do you feel that um, uh, kids who are gifted at, with psychic ability are often misdiagnosed by the medical profession? Um, not only children, adults. I, I truly believe a lot of the people that I've worked with, and I, and I truly believe there's some, some people that I have worked with that are possessed, and they, they are, they're not being treated you know, properly as an RN. I, I cannot say that, um, but my experience otherwise tells me that. And yes, people that, um, and children, you know, it, I do believe they are, a lot of them are misdiagnosed. And if they had the proper people talking to them, they would get the help they truly need to understand what's happening with them and be able to deal with it and work with it. Well, and shamans believe that the psychiatric wards are full of future healers. So, I mean, I think that, you know, they're learning these lessons now so in future lifetimes they can become healers for, you know, whatever. Oh, I, I think so too. I think, you know, it's almost a journey sometimes. I think if you believe in reincarnation, a journey from lifetime to lifetime for those experiences. But uh, uh, we are running We are running out of time. But Vicki, I've really enjoyed the conversation and we've gone over some, I think, uh, interesting topics and things that need to be discussed, especially towards the end when we talk about the mix between medicine and, and the paranormal and, and psychic abilities. Uh, can you do a shout out if anyone's interested in contacting you? Yes, if anybody would like to contact me, uh, my number is 314-398-2827. And I'd, I'd also like to say, if I could real quick, I'm also a co-author on a book called The Exorcist House, Something Frightening We Didn't Know by Patricia Griffin Ress, Ress, R-E-S-S, and myself available on Amazon as well as the uh, DVD, The Haunted Boy. Awesome. Awesome. I encourage everyone to check it out. And uh, stay tuned to uh, Closer to Death with Selena Rowe. Uh, good night. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. They came to St. Louis thinking that's what they should do. They went to the mother's sister's home and there was so much disturbance the first night that the sister said, you cannot stay here. The brother, the husband's brother, just happened to live in a neighboring community called Belmore here in St. Louis County. That's where they went, and that's where the exorcism was actually started, was in this home in Belmore, Missouri, a St. Louis suburb. With that vortex being as strong as it was, and and as we all, well, people, some people know, but vortexes, you know, are just like tornadoes of energy. 
They can be used for good. They can be used for evil. This is why the demon, I believe, wanted the boy there because the home was built on this powerful vortex for the energy. The, the energy, when I, the first time we went, and the first time I went to the boys' room, which is upstairs in the second floor, the energy was so strong, it took me three times just to be able to set foot in the room. It was pushing me back, being that strong. And I'm very used to energies. And in the, in this
that the boy uh, was drawn to go to St. Louis, why the demon wanted him to come to St. Louis. Um, if you recall, at one point, this, this started out in Maryland, close to Washington, D.C., and up at, they, they weren't able to do anything up there to help the boy, and then the letters L-O-U-I-S became raised from the inside out on his chest. Now, both the, the boy's mom and father had family here in St. Louis. And the first... Of course, this is years and years after the exorcism and everyone connected to it had left. Right, right, right. yes. Uh, well, Vortex is the end of They're not going to go anywhere. They're, that's part of nature. So that the Vortex is still in the home. It's, it's never, it's never going to go. Even when the home's gone, the Vortex is still going to be there. And, and uh, for people who aren't real familiar with the concept, how, how would someone recognize that a Vortex is present? Some people would not recognize it, uh, not be able to really tell that energy, or they might, some people might think it's like, you know, this room just feels kind of strange, kind of a pressure maybe. You know, um, I, I just happen to be very, very sensitive to energies like that. And so some some people may, you know, may, the, other, the other people that were with me, most of them could not sense that, that energy. But I, you know, I could, it, and, it, and it was so powerful at one point when I did get into the room, I was dowsing and I was walking the perimeter of the room. That's all I could do was go around the perimeter of the walls. And when I got to the other side of the room, away from the door, there was a window and I just got past that window and the energy 